Hey guys, so I am working on a procedure game, I've been for a while now, and uh, I've been trying a few different techniques to generate nice looking glass. This is the most recent attempt, which is using a kind of fur based glass where basically you kind of get multiple layers and you apply uh, a texture which is just lots of dots, and then you, um, with those stacked layers, they, they give away this effect. And if you add animation to that, then uh, yeah, it looks looks pretty effective actually. Uh, there are some limitations. You can't really go beyond this height. Well, you can't go beyond this height, and you can't have much more detail. So you couldn't have like, flowers, for instance, or they'd just be flat. So not not ideal. Um, but it's it's uh, yeah, quite quite good looking. I'm actually targeting mobile devices as well. Uh, so this is quite performant on mobile devices, and um, it's. The multiple layers which are the the issue so you can you can add as many as you like but uh, yeah there's a there's a cost involved obviously so if you look at the uh, the chunk generation so this is actually taken from a tutorial and um, I'll link to the tutorials that got me this far but this is taken from a tutorial on threading um, I'm actually in the middle of redoing this as well because I want chunks at different 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 distances to have a different amount of detail but uh, basically within the chunk when I'm generating that terrain chunk I'm also adding multiple layers on top that's actually done through here here we go so when I've generated the terrain mesh a uh, step after that is creating a multi mesh and at the moment I'm creating 20 layers on that multi-mesh and that, that's the, the mesh I'm using for the glass. The reason I'm using multiple mesh, meshes or the, the multi-mesh as opposed to just stacking the materials, it's just so I can pass extra data per layer. So in this instance I'm passing the passing the instance count, kind of like a an ID. Um, I'm going to tell sorry, I'm not passing this in account. No, no, I'm, yeah, I'm passing this in account here, but uh, I'm also passing that the, the, I think that's like the percentage. Um, so that's, in this instance, that's going to be 20, so it's 1 over 20. So that would be what, point, point 0.05. And that will go up to, um, to 1. And that allows me to work uh, with a percentage value within the actual shader. The shade is quite straightforward. Uh, ah, it's, it's actually within this material. If we go to the world, we can see the output of that too. So in the shader, um, I've got a few uniforms where I can control colors and height and, and wind speed. Uh, I'm doing most of the, the calculations in the vertex shader because that one one's the least. Um, I'm doing no division, I hear that's quite expensive. And then the fragment shader, um, I very quickly work out if I should discard that fragment because uh, obviously that's quicker. Um, and then based on the, the incline of the, the vertex, uh, and I've got some, some heights in here as well so I don't show glass like under the water or on top of the mountain and stuff. But uh, yeah, based on that, I then texture the vertex and I also apply a, a scissor effect which is how I get the glass to get smaller nearer the tips and um, toned it down a little bit because uh, it was a little bit wasteful I think initially but um, yeah it's looking looking pretty good at the moment I think and uh, yeah benefit of using uniforms is I can uh, change a lot of the values from here so I can change the that slope tolerance figure, as I say, so that allows me to only have it on like completely flat bits of ground, for instance, of which there were a few here. Um, I can let's just increase that again. I can change the, the colors for some interesting effects. So I can uh, different types of greens and blue and lavender fields if you're into that. Games. Um, and then um, yeah, I've got the base color as well, so the base color could potentially be completely different. But uh, I'm just using a, a darker, a darker green. Um, that kind of highlights the the wind 
effect, which is also just a, a sign and a cause which we're going through. Uh, again, based on the, the height of the layer, so you can see if I go down here, you can see at the bottom of the layer, and um, there's like hardly any movement, if any. And then as we get to the topmost layer, um, it's moving completely. And yeah, within the actual shader itself, uh, what's cool in here? Not a lot, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, so multi mesh instance to generate all the two ends. Um, I'll probably change this to chunks going forward, and I'll likely experiment with using fins as opposed to as opposed to using this layer technique. It's for this fake fur technique. And uh, yeah, this actually works quite well with my my two ends. So if I um, like make this into inch header, so if I get my uh, System one, and I change the slope tolerance for instance. So, if I increase that, then I can change the slope tolerance of the grass to, to match that, maybe. It's too shabby. Um, when you actually play it. The shader better handles the camera position, so it it is correctly hiding this up as well. Over here, you can see that the color is quite different, so I need to match the color to the actual um, to the grass of the of the terrain, perhaps. But uh, yeah, I think it looks quite cool. Um, hopefully, that's helpful to someone. Uh, it's been quite educational, for sure. <laughs> hey, as I say, next step, I think I'll look into it using using fins, so the more traditional technique and. Um, just seeing how that performs on mobile. This actually runs really well on my on my phone, so I might continue using it. I'm not too sure yet. We'll see. But uh, yeah, that's it. Cheers.